Hi, good morning everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here live from the Beehive at QBsQuest.com. I'm so glad you can join me today. My voice sounds a little hoarse this morning, so I apologize for that. Um, it was a really, really busy week last week. As some of you know, I was at On Stage Live. It's a Stampin' Up! Um, event. They hold them twice a year. And this one uh, was the live event that was held in Salt Lake City. And I got to see so many of my demonstrator friends. And, um, and if I didn't get a chance to say hello to you, I'm sorry. Sometimes we are in a, like this big group and and sometimes it's hard to say hello to everyone but I know some of my customers of course couldn't go because this is for for demonstrators so um, this is just one of the perks of, of being a demonstrator and there's a lot of hobby demonstrators there too and because we just love stamping and sometimes we're our own best customers I think that's how I started out I stamped for three years before I became a demonstrator um, but then I became a demonstrator and I was a hobby demonstrator for about three days before I was like hmm, maybe I should do a class and then and then that kind of snowballed and stuff but some people just always stay as hobby demonstrators but I digress um, so I wanted to show you my t-shirt let me just back up a bit um, it will be backwards for you but this says be creative on it and um, Rhonda Wade uh, gave me one of these shirts I'm on her um, uh, she has a business builders group and I'm on her at admin team and so she uh, gave us one of these shirts and I, I love the message of be creative so I thought I would wear that today um, so today is casing Tuesday and as with every Tuesday we take a card out of the catalog by we I mean Catalina and I uh, we choose a card out of the catalog and then we copy it and we uh, share it on our Facebook group and you are welcome to join us on our Facebook group and share the card that you made based on this week's challenge now last week we put out a call to get some new people blogging with us and Catalina and I are going to get together this week and we're going to decide what we're going to do I wasn't sure at first how many people would respond but we got a bunch of people so I'm so excited for that so we will um, we will um, decide this week and we will get back to you um, I'm sorry we couldn't do a quicker turnaround time but I I just got back on Sunday night and um, I'm playing catch-up this week so that's one of the things that we're gonna be playing catch-up with so um, we'll let you know very very soon so that's a lot of information um, but um, Anyway, um, I had a fabulous time at uh, On Stage Live and I was very honored um, to be in the global top 100. I was very, very surprised. I was hoping to be in the top 250, but I didn't expect to be in the top 100. So I just want to say a huge thank you to all my customers downline and demonstrators and family and friends who, who support me and give me a shout out every once in a while. I just, I really, really appreciate that. Um, because I'm all online, sometimes I don't get all that feedback from people. And um, so it's so nice to know that uh, that all of you support me and I I so appreciate that so thank you so much okay I'm still blabbing aren't I and there's a casing card to case so um, and thank you for everyone who's joining me this morning and for I see some people have posted congratulations so thank you so much for that um, let me flip my camera around so if you get motion sick close your eyes for a second while I do this just give me a second Oh, I almost canceled the video. What? Oh my gosh, I pressed the wrong button. Have you ever done that? Press the wrong button? You're like, ah, cancel, cancel. I was going to, uh, instead of flipping it, I was canceling the video. That's really, really bad. Okay, let me press the correct button this time. Too many buttons to press and they keep moving around. Okay, so there's my view. Let me flip you around. There's your eyes. Let me get this settled. That looks pretty good. So today's card we're casing is this card. It has, <clears throat> excuse me, a big layout. 
you can add this little strip of cardstock down here and I don't know it's very hard to see but there's also a little piece of ribbon running along the bottom so this is a really big focal point area so you're gonna want to look either you want to look either to create a scene or pick a very large stamp to fill this area so that you're or a bunch of smaller stamps but um, this would be very suitable for a large um, image so what I did with it was I took the um, that large area and I <clears throat> excuse me I have a frog in my throat this morning I took this tree and um, I like the fact that you know that it covered the large area but then I was like, okay, I could have a strip of cardstock running across the bottom, but why not make it a tree skirt? So I actually omitted this strip across the bottom and I omitted, not omitted, I changed. I changed the ribbon instead of running it across, I turned it into a little bow on the tree and I kept the tree really simple. And one of the reasons was last night, I was actually creating this card. I should have done it, you know, a week ago uh, before I left for on stage, but I didn't have a chance to do that. So as I was creating this, I was like, yeah, I could put ornaments on there. I could put presents on there, but guess what? I didn't have a lot of time. And I know sometimes when you're making multiples of cards, I know you don't have a lot of time. So one of the great things about this card is that, let's see, we've got the card base, <clears throat> we've got the Sahara, Sahara sand layer. So that's one, two. We've got two die cuts of the skirt, three, four. We've got the tree, five, six, star, seven, bow. So this has like seven pieces to it, which I think is probably doable if you want to do this as a Christmas card. Now, if you added presents and ornaments on here, it would take you a whole lot longer. So I think this card would be doable as a Christmas card. And I, I like it because it's nice and bright. You know, you've got your Christmas red and green and a little pop with a gold star. So I think this is a doable Christmas card. And so there's a reason to keep things simple sometimes. And I think that is a good one. So um, what products did I use? I used the Ready for Christmas bundle, which is this really, really cute bundle. Um, and it has this little dog in it. If you're a dog lover, I know you're going to love this one. And it has this big tree in it. And the tree can be die cut with, let me turn this around, with this outline right here. It also has a staircase. So you can make kind of elaborate layouts with it. But you can also simplify it and just put a Christmas tree on it like I did. So remember, if you buy these together as a bundle, you can save 10%. I also used the marble background to create this um, background um, image. The reason I did this, I originally was going to use, let me just show you. I was going to originally use some of this paper from the Wood Textures Designer Series Paper Pack. And I love this. And I thought, yeah, that would be awesome. And I could put that as a layer on the inside. I think it would have looked nice. But the one thing with this one is like it did need a lighter background and there's only four sheets in here. And I was thinking if I was going to make Christmas cards, um, I probably don't want to buy, you know, 10 packs of this paper just to make all my Christmas cards. So with you guys in mind, if you're making Christmas cards, I thought I would create my own background and that way you can create um, more of them within a little bit more of a budget. So that's why I did this one Sahara Sand on Sahara Sand. So that's why I used the marble background. So let me um, get started. Let me put this whole card together for you. So to start with, we're going to need to stamp that Christmas tree. So you need your stamp mounted. I'm using an e-block here and I've kind of put this tree on a bit of an angle because it fits on here a little bit better. And then I'm using my garden green ink pad. This color here is wild wasabi. It is a little lighter than the garden green and I thought that way there'd be more contrast on the branches. You could also use garden green, but then your um, the details of your tree won't be 
as noticeable. So I'm picking up the ink pad in my hand because I feel I have more control over it on this large stamp. You could also ink it up like this if you wanted to. I just kind of like to do this reverse method. I can kind of see better what's happening. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to fit this on here. So I think I can do that. And then I just want to leave this on here for a few seconds to make sure the ink transfers, giving it a little pressure. Some people also like to use a foam mat under their photopolymer, which you can certainly do. That's a pretty good impression though. Let me see, do we need to stamp anything else right now? No, we can wait and stamp this um, background in a second. So let me do some die cutting. So you'll need your big shot and I'm going to grab, where's my little tree? It's over here. So you need this outline. Oh, and we're also going to do the little star for the top of the tree. So I've got, I'm using my magnetic platform, but you can use the platform that comes with your machine too, if you want to. I just like my magnetic platform for doing, uh, for cutting the dies because it is a little bit easier to hold the things in shape. Now, my magnet's fighting me just a little bit. So what I do is I move the cardstock, not the, the framelit, because um, the you can't really fight with the magnet. See how it's shifting a little bit? You just have to get it in the right spot. Okay, now I'm being a perfectionist. Then I've got some scrap. Um, gold, um, this is gold foil paper sheet. And I'm going to cut on the back side because it's a little easier to see where I'm cutting. And I'm just kind of like using up a little scrap piece um, just because I do that. Um, and then I can put my second cutting plate on top and run this through. What I would do if I was making a lot of these, I would like take a half sheet of cardstock and I would stamp my trees like like this on, on the sheet back to back and then I would cut them out all at once kind of assembly line style so that I'm saving um, the time. And so here's my tree and then here's my little star. Throwing it away. There's my little star. So I'll just reserve those. We need to die cut a couple other things for this project. We need uh, some real red cardstock, which I have right here. And we need some of this. This is the quilted. Let me double check the name on that. This is the quilted Christmas designer series paper pack. And for this, I'm going to use the third largest scallop one and the third largest smooth oval. Um, so this one's going to be the smooth oval and this one's going to be the scalloped oval. And then I'm just going to run those through. So you can see you can kind of do things in batches. You could do um, these two ovals at the same time. So that way you're not having to crank through quite as many things. So we've got this one's going to be the inside of my tree skirt and this one's going to be the outside. Put this away. I think I die cut everything. Okay, I need a scrap piece of grid paper. So I've got that here and we're going to now stamp the marbled background. So I've got a piece of Sahara sand right here and this one is three and three quarter inches by five inches. I've got my big background stamp. I've, this is on a, let me find the correct letter for this block. This is an F block. So it's our biggest block that we have. And that's what you would need. You'd need a big block if you're going to buy this in the cling mount. And then I've got my crumb. Oh, did I use crumb cake? No, I think I used Sahara sand. Grabbed the wrong one this morning. Um, this one is uh, Sahara sand. So 
just grab that and then I'm just going to tap this all over my big background. You're going to want to make sure you do a good job and cover this whole thing well. Okay. And then what I like to do, so I know that I'm aiming correctly, I just drop that on here. And then it's kind of wet, so it's going to kind of stick. And then I just turn it over. And then I apply pressure because this is a big background stamp. So I kind of wiggle back and forth and side to side and make sure that I get good coverage. And then I'm going to peel that off. And that's what you get. It kind of looks a bit like a wood texture, and that's what I was going for. So I can get rid of that. So now we just need to assemble the card. So I've got my card base here. Let me tell you measurements for that. This is an 11 inch by four and a quarter inch card base. I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark, and then I folded it along the score line. And I like to use a bone folder to smooth down the fold because it helps the card to lay flat like that. Then I've got my trusty Tombow and all I'm going to do is put some glue on back. And the reason I love to use this multi-purpose liquid glue is because it really holds well and your card will not come apart. And I'm just going to center that on the card. And then I'm going to take my two skirt pieces. And I'm just going to put a light layer of Tombow on that. And then I'm just going to center it on my little scallop piece. Then I'm going to take some more Tombow and put it on here. Make sure your card is opening the correct way. There is really no redeeming an upside down Christmas tree unless you want to give your friends a good laugh. Um, yeah, there's yeah, there's no good way to to fix that problem. Well, if that problem happened, you'd probably have to start with a new card base, especially if you were um, gluing things on with Tombow, because um, you would cut the top off and then you know um, cut it right here and glue the front onto a new card base the correct way. So you would end up wasting a bit of cardstock, but that way you wouldn't have to cut everything again. That's how I would solve that problem. Can you tell I've had that problem before? Yes, I have actually done that. I have put my focal point on the wrong way, and I'm sure some of you have done that too. So, um, uh, so my tree, Tombow, I decided to not pop this up on dimensionals because I wanted to pop the star up on dimensionals. So I'm just going to kind of center this on my tree skirt. Um, I want to leave a little bit of room up at the top so that I can add my star uh, up top there. So now I've got my little star. And where did my little mini dimensionals go? Porg! They were here. Oh, there they are. Yay! So, you know, these are like really, really tiny dimensionals. I don't even know how many of these guys are on a sheet. Um, this might last me a long, long time because they're so small. But I love them because now I don't have to cut my dimensionals into little tiny pieces, right? They will fit on the, that little tiny, tiny star. And I can pop something up that I really think is important to pop up, which is the star for the tree. So then you can just kind of stick that on top like that. And it has, you know, just a wee bit of dimension to it. So that's cool. Then I already tied a bow because, um, have you ever tried to tie a bow in front of someone, a perfect bow? Yeah, it, it doesn't happen well when you're doing it in front of people. Mini glue dots to reach to grab those because I conveniently put them away this morning instead of putting them back where they needed to be. Okay, up these um, dots have been getting kind of squashed because as you um, get to the bottom of the roll, they get bigger. I don't know if that's because I squish them or because that's the way when they pull them through the machine, that's the way they manufacture them. Um, so what I do, let me find my very end one. I kind of make this glue dot into more of a blob. I'm rolling it on the bottom of my paper piercing tool 
So now it's like not quite as wide and I can stick this on, oh, put it in the camera, on the bottom of my knot. Okay, so it's a little bit more flattened or smaller than a regular mini glue dot. And then I can just add that to the center of my card and squish that knot down. And uh, if you want, you can like make these little ends a little smaller, um, a little shorter, I should say, uh, if you want. Or if you don't like them sticking out at weird angles, you could put a little bit of adhesive under there. I'm just gonna kind of leave this as is. And uh, there we go. We have a really cute Christmas card. Oh, and you know what I was gonna do that I didn't do? Um, on my regular card. Um, so you could stamp um, one of these uh, greetings in there. So let me do that. A wish for everything, Mary. I think that sounds kind of like a fun greeting. It's a little different greeting. It's different than Merry Christmas. So let's do that. Let me grab a D block. And so if I was going to stamp this, I think on the inside, I think real red would be kind of nice. So let me grab real red. Or if you only bought the green ink pad to do the tree, you could stamp it in green as well. But I think it's kind of fun to stamp a greeting in red. So let me do that. Ink this up. Ink, ink, ink. Hmm. Okay, there. That looks better. And then you can stamp this right in the center of your card, like that. I think that kind of finishes it off nice. This is a very nice font, so that is kind of cool. So there's my card. Um, I really hope, let me let me turn, turn you guys around. I hope that you guys will join us this week and do a card and post it on our Facebook group. If you're wondering where the heck is the Facebook group, well, look in the description of this video. It's right down there. Um, the measurements for everything that I use for my card are also available on my blog and you'll find that link in the description of the video too. So everything you need just generally look in the description of my videos. I usually post a lot of stuff. Um, then if you go to my blog, I have a list of all the supplies that I use. I have a list of the measurements of the card layers for my card. And that will also give you a good idea of what the measurements were for the original card. So if you want to create um, the like something that's closer to the original card, um, you can just grab my measurements and they should be somewhat accurate to that. I will give you kind of a good idea. Um, the other thing is you can recreate the rich, original card. Some people, that's what they want to do. They want to actually case the card exactly and that is perfectly fine. When you copy someone else's design, you learn something in the process. The nice thing about copying cards out of the Stampin' Up! catalog is that Stampin' Up! wants you to copy these designs. That's why they are in the catalog and um, you're not stepping on anyone's toes by copying these cards. So copy exactly and in enjoy that. Or you can change the color scheme or you can um, change the stamp set you can change the layout just a little bit like I did today I changed my rectangle into ovals so there's a lot of potential for these cards and we can learn a lot from creating these cards and you have to start somewhere if you're a beginner you have to start somewhere in creating cards and the best way to do that is to copy a good design if you've been stamping for a long time, maybe you have, you're in a style rut, it's good to copy someone else's cards so you can learn uh, from that. So I actually really enjoy these, um, this, this Casing Tuesday, and I hope you will join us on, um, on our group. So let me scroll up and see if I have any questions. My card was so 
easy today that I don't think I had any. There's a lot of people that are are saying hello from New Jersey and Illinois and um, one might downline. Oh, a couple of my downline are watching. Hey, shout out to you guys. So nice to see you. Um, thank you for the compliments and um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me here. I will post this video uh, later on YouTube and actually right after I get done, it gets posted to my Facebook group. So if you missed the first part, you can go back and watch it. And um, I will be back here again next Tuesday for another Facebook Live and we'll be doing the next card. And uh, so have a great week and I know it's getting cold in parts of the US. Um, so uh, bundle up, get outside, breathe some fresh air. It's gorgeous out there even when it's cold. So have a great week everyone. Bye.